Hi class, in this video, I'm gonna explain the acid-base equation and how it works to balance the blood pH and homeostasis. And then also, um, we will la later then look at how issues with the body can cause imbalance. But first, let's look at how it works in normal physiology. So this slide has a lot of going on here. I numbered it and tried to color code it. And then the explanation of the slide goes with um, the next two slides, okay? But I will also then work to explain um, the figure using this video, okay? So if you think about when we are looking at blood pH, okay? So let's take a look at what happens um, in this equation with this um, hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. So starting from the one, your living cells need energy to survive and to do work. And we've been stressing this idea since day one. So that's cellular metabolism, making ATP, cellular respiration, aerobic respiration using air and oxygen to make ATP. Well, as a product of making that ATP, we will generate carbon dioxide. So you can see here, let me get a little highlighter. You can see here that CO2 is then generated from the production of ATP. As cells are doing work and living, the CO2 then is moved because it needs to be exhaled. So it then moves from and the tissue into the blood. So you can now CO2 is moved into the blood here. When the CO2 is moved into the blood at step two, it will combine with water, H2O. So CO2 plus H2O in the blood will make H2CO3. H2CO3 um, is carbonic acid, so it's a very weak acid. In, so, in the solution of blood, the carbonic acid will dis dissociate and release hydrogen ions. So the hydrogen ion is now in the blood and it will be carried by hemoglobin. And then HCO3, the bicarbonate, is now also um, diffused into the blood. So this equation, as you make CO2, the equation pushes to the right to make this hydrogen ion bicarbonate. This is only a temporary state because as you are in the alveolar tissue and you're exhaling CO2, you want the CO2 to be exhaled, the equation then pushes the other direction in reverse to the left, where now the hydrogen ion bound to the hemoglobin will combine with the bicarbonate back again to go back to carbonic acid and back to H2O and CO2 and you exhale the CO2 using ventilation respiratory system. So as you make CO2 at step one and push the equation this way, you now, when you exhale, you push the equation in reverse. So if the rate of CO2 production is in line with the rate of CO2 exhalation or ventilation, then in the net, you have not gained an excess of hydrogen ion or bicarbonate ion. So you're just going back and forth in equilibrium. Nothing excess is uh, accumulating, okay? So that balances the pH. So as you exercise, your muscle needs more ATP, but you're also generating more CO2. You will make this equation, moving it to the right, but then you're also exhaling faster. So you're gonna exhale the CO2 faster. So if you're able to do that, no excess hydrogen ion accumulates and the pH remains at homeostasis, okay? So that's a really important aspect of the equi equilibrium reaction, keeping in pace with the CO2 production using CO2 ventilation. So this is the blood, right? So in the blood, other things are dumping um, hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion into the blood. So there are other forms of metabolism that is not aerobic metabolism. So if you're taking cells are making ATP from the breakdown of fats and protein and not um, glucose, then that, it can't, that is called ketosis. Ketosis generates ketone, which will di 
dump hydrogen ion into the blood. So that, that's an excess hydrogen ion from um, another form of metabolism. So if the excess hydrogen ions dump into the blood and there's no, not enough bicarbonate to accept that hydrogen ion, this will then cause imbalance. We also have anaerobic respiration, the lack of oxygen making ATP will generate lactic acid. When there's too much of this, again, lactic acid will dump hydrogen ion into the blood. And there's excess of hydrogen ion and a lack of bicarbonate to accept the hydrogen ion, then now you have a problem of acidosis. Also different diets, ingestion of acid or basic medication or IV, if it's not quite um, in the proper levels, you can't have an excess of bicarbonate in the blood and not enough hydrogen to pair with it. So in most cases when you know, we can eat you know, lemonade, we can drink lemonade and eat things with acid or have some anaerobic respiration. But that at low level, that's not a huge problem because our body, the liver and the kidney, especially the kidney here, will take the excess hydrogen or bicarb or the lack of and put them into the kidney and balance the ions and the pH. So they can excrete the excess hydrogen ion or regenerate more bicarbonate. So kidney at step four has an important function to make sure that that is um, balanced. So that's the equation. Again, you have to have ways of things coming in, things going out, balancing the equilibrium equation and making sure there is not an excess of hydrogen ion or bicarbonate in the blood so the pH stays in homeostasis. So I have typed up the um, explanation as well. So you can kind of really read it as you listen to this video and look at how the explanation works. And um, I also have a little quick guide just so that you have a quick remembering of it. The equation is the key to this lecture, but sometimes it, it's helpful to have this little quick reminder. So just think about this. I'll explain this hypoventilation. So when you have a hypo ventilation, meaning low ventilation, well, if you don't vent all the CO2, the blood PCO2 goes up and blood hydrogen ion goes up and then the pH then goes down, okay? And the reverse can happen with al uh, alkalosis. So this is acidosis and this is alkalosis. So you have to really think about what is the action and what is going on in the blood, okay? And of course, we have compensatory mechanisms with the respiratory and the urinary system. So this explains um, the equation, okay? So um, really study this and think about what is going on. And the rest of the slides in this chapter actually are going through um, different things that happen in the respiratory system and different things that happen in the urinary system and different things that can happen with met metab uh, different metabolisms and different metabolites and medication. So um, make sure you're really understanding this idea and understand the equation. I'll go on to the next video. We'll talk about respiratory and urinary and metabolic, okay?